The Breath, Video 10. In this video, I'd like to explain the process of diaphragmatic breathing. In earlier videos in this series, we looked at the mechanics of breathing, and we saw that the lungs have a greater capacity to store air in their lower regions, as there are more alveoli, more little pockets, for storing air. So by using our diaphragm when we're breathing, we allow air to be drawn into the lungs to the base of the lungs, and so we fill our lungs to a greater capacity. Now the diaphragm muscle is located between the upper cavity in the torso and the lower cavity. We refer to the upper cavity as the lung cavity and the lower cavity as the abdominal cavity. When we use our diaphragm when we're breathing, the diaphragm muscle, we'll remember, stretches out. And as it stretches out, it puts pressure on the lower cavity, the abdominal cavity. And so the abdominal region pushes it outwards. What we say our belly moves outwards. So when we're breathing in using our diaphragm, our abdominal cavity pushes outwards and it allows for the lung cavity to expand and so allows the lung to receive more air. So just take a moment and locate your diaphragm. Just pay attention to this process. Put some focus on actually using your diaphragm to help you to draw air inwards. Okay, now we'll remember from the last video that while we're doing this, we're endeavoring to allow for a smooth flowing of air on the inhalation and on the exhalation. And we're endeavoring to remove any unnecessary stops or pauses while we're transitioning between the inhalation and exhalation. So we have two things to do now, focus on our diaphragm, ensuring that we're stretching the diaphragm, allowing for the movement of air inwards to the lower parts of the lungs. And as this is occurring, our abdominal region will push outwards. And while we're paying attention to all of that, we're ensuring that our breathing is flowing smoothly and that the transitions are brief, if at all. Okay. Now, science has revealed that the inhalations excite the sympathetic nervous system and the exhalations trigger the parasympathetic nervous system. So when we're breathing in, we are, through our inhalation, um, activating the hormones which are released by the sympathetic nervous system. And when we exhale, breathing out, we're activating the hormones which are released by this parasympathetic nervous system. So in order to create balance between the activation of both aspects of our nervous system, we breathe at a ratio of one to two, which means that we breathe in for the count of one, and we exhale for the count of two. Breathing in for the count of one, exhaling for the count of two. I'm remembering that we're endeavoring to keep our breath smooth and without interruptions on the transitions. So now, to just recap, we're using our diaphragm so as to fill our lungs to the greater capacity. We're ensuring that the inhalation and exhalation is flowing smoothly and that there's no unnecessary pauses when we're transitioning between each inhalation and exhalation. And we're also keeping the count of inhalation for one, exhalation for two. So let's just try that. Now it's worth bearing in mind that when we're breathing in for the count of one, the inhalation will be slightly quicker than the exhalation, which is for the count of two. And the reason for this is by breathing in, when we're breathing in, the heart is said to beat at a slightly faster rate. On the inhalation, the heart has a greater responsibility to ensure that all that air gets taken in and is absorbed into the bloodstream. On the exhalation, the heart has a moment to relax just slightly. And so the exhalation is slower to synchronize with the slightly um, slower beat of the heart. 
so the inhalation is a little bit faster than the exhalation. So let's just try that. Breathing in. So just to recap, we're endeavoring to use our diaphragm muscle so as to fill the lower regions of the lungs which have a greater capacity to hold air. We're endeavoring to keep our breathing smooth and flowing and to remove the intervals, the pauses which occur at the transition between inhalation and exhalation. We're endeavouring to breathe at the count of one to two, where the inhalation is slightly quicker and the exhalation is slightly slower, so as to allow for a natural flowing of air at the count of one to two. Now I know at the beginning that this can feel uncomfortable, especially if you're not familiar with regulating the breath in any way. However, I'd recommend that when you sit to meditate, that you take a few moments at the beginning of your practice to consciously regulate your breath using diaphragmatic breathing for the ratio of one to two. And then as your body becomes more relaxed and your mind experiences greater peace, you can let go of consciously regulating the breathing and just pay attention to the natural flow of your breath. And in this way, you can move from more gross levels of attentiveness to more subtle levels of attentiveness and internalize your attention experiencing deep concentration.